I was 19 years old when I was diagnosed with lupus. I believe I was diagnosed with lupus um, at the age of 19. I was sick for 20 years. Um, I was unable to have children. Um, I have an adopted son. Eventually, um, it affected most of my vital organs. If I could have my Cassie bag, <laughs> I would, uh, you know, every day would be so special. Well, I remember going to the emergency room and I went to sleep. And then when I woke up, it was like a month later. Woke up one morning devastated. I'm still mourning the fact that I had a healthy child who was no longer a healthy child. I didn't know that it would be so bad. I didn't think that it would change my life so much at that point as it does, as it had. Lupus destroyed my, my kidney. So I would say my biggest fear is actually is dying. I'll be honest with you. I actually say that, you know, I'm going to start working on my wheel. Well, I would just point out to my personal experience of having lost uh, just such a, a valuable person that I loved uh, so much. Uh, you know, it, it was something that I really didn't think about enough and, and, and didn't hope that it would never happen. And, but it is, it's a life-threatening uh, type of situation. Boy, I really can't explain it, but it is definitely an illness that um, is very painful. It really is. She had the obvious symptoms were fatigue. She was very arthritic. She had um, a lot of severe pain in her spine. Her hands were doubled in size. Her feet were so swollen that she could barely walk. Her ankles were very fragile. Um, she had uh, skin lacerations, um, like ulcers on her cheeks and on her eyes. I took her to a doctor, but he thought to him it looked like textbook lupus. Nurses started coming in the room and, oh my gosh, you're going through chemo. What for? Leukemia? No, lupus. I had to explain to the nurses why I am going through chemo for lupus. I definitely want to have family, but I'm already telling one of my sisters, well, you're going to have to be a surrogate mom because my doctor told me I can't be, I can't have children. So it's, you, people come up to me and they they, why are you thinking about things like this? Well, because I have to. The lung involvement um, had really taken over my life. I had about 12 to 15 percent of my lungs functioning and was on 24 hour a day oxygen. I had been on steroids for 20 years, so I weighed 254 pounds. I, I had failed all of the conventional lupus treatments. So they put me on oral chemotherapy at home, which is very dangerous um, and can cause bladder cancer, but it was the only thing that they had to, to keep me alive. And I contacted Chicago, uh, Northwestern University, um, Dr. Richard Burt, who was doing stem cell transplant research for lupus. Um, he had only done a few at the time. When I talked with him, he had done three. Um, they were successful, but he had only done three, which was really a difficult decision because I had a nine-year-old son and I wanted to see him grow up, but I did. at that time, I, there was no hope to see him grow up. And a year later, I was able to read a book. This was two years after my transplant now. I was able to read a book. I was starting to able to, to help my son with his math again. Um, and remembering how to do simple algebra that I had done, you know, years before. She really wanted to, to be a mom. Uh, they, they bought a big house. Uh, they, they bought a house that actually had five bedrooms in it. And uh, she was hoping to fill that house. Little Mikey was born. and. Uh, just such a joy. I mean, it, it made her so, so happy, and it made us so happy. She had been home only a couple days, and uh, she uh, didn't feel right, and uh, they had to rush her back. We rushed her back to the hospital, and she had heart failure. She had to get on all this extra medication, um, but, but somehow she got through that. She worked for a company out of uh, Tiffin, Ohio, she had to go back to their home office for a, uh, uh, one of their quarterly meetings. She left in the morning, everything was fine. Later on that afternoon, when she was out there, she just 
got progressively weaker and, and sicker, the people that she was working with uh, uh, felt that she should go to the hospital. We got into the emergency room, and uh, as soon as we walked in the door, we were met by this woman who identified herself as a chaplain. And you know, I figure, why are you here? You know, I, I didn't want to hear that. It was a period of about 32 hours from the time that she got started to get sick until she passed away. Parents, hug your children, you know. Don't let a day go by without saying, I love you. I think many people don't appreciate something that I think is an incredibly important uh, concept, and that is that these young young patients, and mainly women, have exceedingly high rates of heart attacks and strokes. They fear death. I mean, without a doubt, um, you can die from lupus, and that's a, that's a big fear. They fear disability. Um, they fear losing their job. Many of the women fear that they'll never have children because pregnancy can be a challenging time for women with lupus. Um, they fear that if they have children, they can't care for their children, that they can't be an effective mother or parent. They can't be a good spouse um, because of the unpredictable nature of their disease. We as a community have to do several things. We have to talk about it. We have to petition our congressmen. We have to get the federal government to sit up and say, this disease has to get just as much attention as other devastating and potentially fatal diseases. We need more research dollars. We need more physicians and more scientists thinking about lupus and working in this area. And we have to do it now.